good evening and welcome to my channel um it's been a while that i wanted to record this video because of so many activities i keep i keep pushing the something forward but tonight although i'm very tired and i would love to sleep this is almost 1 30 in the night and i would love to sleep but then i said that i must record this video so i don't keep you know postponing the something and then i will never do that anymore so i hope you like the video i hope i don't get to do so much it is and i hope it comes out fine so that i wouldn't have so much work to do with the editing and then it's going to be the first in the series of videos i'm going to be posting online on so many things and then i will explain to you the reason why i decided to like start posting videos and all that now a month ago that should be probably um, that was last year, I think early last year. I watched a documentary on the farmers that work in the cocoa plantation. Now, they actually focused more on the illegal farms, you know, the people, the underage kids who don't go to school, who are paid peanuts, you know, the farmers who are paid nothing, you know, to work in those kind of places. I think that should be in Ivory Coast or Ghana. So those farmers have been exploited basically because the big companies that actually produce the chocolates make a lot more, like infinitely more, compared to what these poor farmers who actually you know put their time, their strength, everything into the work who are compared to what these farmers make. So, so I saw that after watching that, I, I developed this curiosity like towards the cocoa farming, and I decided to go and look more. I decided to go and like find out more about it. This time around, not like wanting to find out how the illegal farms, how they operate and all that, but this business, how much is worth? And if it is something that I can actually yield money, because if these farmers were to spend their time, you know, spend their energy to plant the crops, harvest them, if they were to spend that time and then sell to someone who is close to them, who is able to produce the chocolates, pay them well, produce the something and satisfy the local needs, that would be nice. In fact, some of them haven't even tasted chocolate for the first time. All right, like they plant, they harvest and sell um, the pots or the beans to um, the middleman that actually sells to the bigger companies. But themselves, the end product of their labor, like the chocolate itself, you know, they haven't tasted it time for the first time even so i saw that and it ignited some kind of curiosity in me and i decided to go and find out more about it then a few weeks ago i shared and um, something with friends and i told them that this is actually something that someone can do um, and make a living satisfy a need of course that is there but also you make a just profit out of it of course i'm not an expert in the whole thing but this is just um, something I've been thinking in my bed chamber, I've been thinking about on my own, which I think that somebody can do. Now, I give you some figures that I was able to find out um, while reading some things online. According to Euro Monitor, the overall chocolate market rose 13% between 2010 and 2015 to hit $101 billion. CNN has an article of 2014 that says that the chocolate industry is worth an estimated $110 billion a year, right? It might be a little bit less now, but that is the figure that is there. Then Este Asset Management said that cocoa is the source, is the main source of income for 5.5 million small-scale farmers, many of whom live on less than $1.25 per day. So like if it's in Nigeria now, I don't know the exchange rate, probably around 300 or 400 naira that these people will live. But then they're the ones that actually, you know, sweat a lot to make this. Of the $110 billion cited by CNN, Osfam says that only 3% of this sum actually gets to the farmers. The rest of the money, you know, is spread along the chain of the people, the transport, the product. Um, and then the producers that actually get the chunk of it and then you have the retailers and the supermarkets and all the industries that actually produce the chocolates most of them you know are situated abroad so most of them are located abroad in nigeria we have probably two or three of them 
that's uh, into it. And I think that foreign companies, I'm not so sure, but I think that also foreign companies that have their, their branch in Nigeria, their branches in Nigeria. And so most of them are located outside and then they produce the chocolates. And of course, the consumption of chocolates mostly, you know, is outside. I mean, you have Europe, North America, and Asia that consume more compared to Africa. But then it is worthy of note that without Africa, and in particular West Africa, Chocolates wouldn't even exist. Why? Because the raw material that is used in making chocolate, the main raw material, which is cocoa, actually comes from West Africa. Like we had ones that actually produce the cocoa itself. 70%, according to this um, ST asset management, 70% of cocoa actually comes from West Africa, from Ivory Coast, from Ghana, from Nigeria. And from Cameroon. In fact, at one point, Nigeria was the second largest producer in the world of cocoa around 1967, 1964 or so. That was before the discovery of crude oil. You know, let me open a little parenthesis. You know, when our leaders discovered something, they abandoned agriculture and focused on that. And they're still focused on that because of how myopic they are. You know, people leaders, they think that crude oil is the future not knowing that most of the European countries now, most of the developed countries are actually shifting away from fossil fuels and going into renewable energy and all that. We, Nigeria was actually the second most, you know, uh, most important country in terms of um, cocoa production. Now we are the fourth in the world. We are the fourth um, most, uh, we are the first, uh, we are the fourth, uh, cocoa producers in the world. Now, the, another thing you also have to note among these that I say that the rise in the number of Nigerians that are seeking for chocolate and seeking for the taste of chocolate is actually increasing. It's only an increase. I saw that between 2008 and 2013, all right, the importation of chocolate actually increased by 98.9%. That is... 99% basically, all right? And the cost of this chocolate is actually much, all right? You have the importation of chocolate between 2018, 2008, sorry, and 2013 that increased by 98%. And the cost of these products are actually high because they are imported. I mean, this is different. This is besides, you know, that, you know, beside the ones that your friends get to you or your families get to you when they travel abroad or you get for yourself when you go on vacation abroad and buy. So this is actually a potential um, market. It's actually like a potential means of growth, right? Because there is no one that is actually satisfying the local demand for chocolates. And then you see that according to the United States, um, sorry, according to the United Nations, um, nations, according to their estimation, the population of Nigeria is 1.1 million. All right. Okay. They might not have the same purchasing power as the countries in Europe. But then if you look at the countries in Europe and look at their population, you see that um, places like Germany, Germany is around 85 or 80, you know, million people. The United Kingdom, 65 million people. France, a little bit less than 65 million. Italy is around 60 million people. Now look at that and look at 190 million people. You know, that is a big market. That is where someone can invest. Let me open under parenthesis. In Nigeria now, the location of Nigeria, all right, the geographical location of Nigeria makes it a very big market for someone who plans on investing in, renew um, in renewable energy Okay, so, so this is a potential market that someone can actually invest in and be able to make his profit because you are meeting a need, like I was saying, that I said before, you are meeting a need, but you are also making a good um, profit out of it. You are making a just and right profit from the something. I know some people will say you have this problem, you have the problem with the roads, the lights and all that. I know all of that. All right. But one thing that I've always been convinced of is this, like your greatest challenges, right? Our greatest challenges as a country can as well become our biggest resources. All right. Our greatest lacks can become our greatest gains 
if we decide to have a change of mindset and begin to work. Like the, the more you keep thinking about the problems, the more you keep thinking about you can't do anything, the more you keep thinking about all the challenges that we have in Nigeria, the more you'll be paralyzed, the more you won't come up with new ideas, the more you won't attempt to do anything, the more you won't risk anything, the more you will sit down comfortably on your on your bed, you know, and stay there dreaming of Europe and dreaming of places you can come. You can come to, and that is why some people might spend as much as 600,000 naira. You know, they will sell their lands, they will close their shops, and all that just to pay someone who is going to take them through Libya to come to this place. Like something that, if you were told how dangerous, you know, the route is, you know, we have a few people who actually go, you have a few people who actually went through that route to live to tell the story because many of them die. You know, you see some parents who are still waiting for their kids to call them, but their kids will never call them because they either died in the desert or they got drowned in the sea. So it's something that is really, really bad, you know, to go into. So, but if someone takes a little look at the resources that are in Nigeria, if someone's eyes is open to the fact that Nigeria is actually a gold mine, that we are sitting on a gold mine, despite the terrible things that our leaders keep doing, despite the corruption and all that, that Nigeria is a gold mine. The resources have not been tapped at all. If someone's eyes are open to that, you see that, we we'll begin to like think in a different way and begin to think of how to improve the place. And that is the reason why I want to start, you know, this series of uh, conversation with you if you're interested. Of course, someone might not be interested in going into cocoa farming. I mean, someone might not be interested in going to, you know, plant cocoa, you know, seeds and wait for five years or six years before the something will grow and then harvest and all that. But let this be a kind of stimulation thing, thing to think of, you know, of the things that you can do, of areas you can invest in, of the ideas you can put into work. And I'll be telling you a number of my ideas, you know, in the coming videos. I will tell you ideas I have, not just on this, that somebody can you know, take his time to invest in. A number of people are graduates already. Some have their master's, some have their doctorate degrees, but they are out of job. They are not working. They are not doing anything at all. And they just stay there paralyzed. So if we can take a look at the opportunities, it is going to help us a lot. And it, I know things are difficult. I know that things are not the way it should be now, but then I believe also that we can make it. Somebody said something. He said, Start by doing the things that are necessary, right? And then proceed and do the things that are possible. You will see that suddenly you are doing the things that are impossible. So if we start from little, little things, I mean, that we can do with the little, you know, mega resources that we have, you will see that very soon you'll be able to do the things that are actually big, that you never dreamt of even they should be, you know, we have our leaders that, you know, have so many things, so many skeletons in their cupboard who don't, who are so myopic, all right, in their vision, in their vision, there are no plans and all that, but then you, we, we can't allow them, you know, to destroy our future, we can't allow them to steal the future of our kids, we have to start doing something, you know, the country, I mean, Nigeria is our home, it's not just the home of those people. It is the home of every one of us. The 190 something million people and the ones that are yet unborn. So it is our home and we have a duty. Yes, it is our duty to actually do something. It is our duty to actually make it work. It is our duty to hold them accountable. So if someone has, I mean, an idea, pursue the something. All right. If someone wants to go into the cocoa production, for example, Go and read more about it. Go and do some um, some more research on the something. Study the articles you can study. You can even go for an internship, whether it is paid or an unpaid internship, in some of those companies that do it in Nigeria. Like I was saying, I think we have about two or three of them that actually that are involved in that. So you can go to those places and ask them if you could do an internship so that you learn from them, you learn the craft there. I mean, you could apply for a visa to come to to go to Italy, to go to wherever, I mean, where you have those companies, to go there and learn the something. Then after learning it, you can come back to Nigeria to develop it because you have that in Nigeria, the cocoa is produced, so you can buy the something directly from them. You can go to some of those plants. I read about a plant in Ondo State that 
I don't need that. They're working on this something now. Somebody can buy those local companies, those plants, and begin to do something there. Or somebody can decide, I want to build my own plants and then start there. And you have so many supermarkets around that could actually help you to market the goods. It's not going to be easy, you know. I'm talking this way now and then it looks so easy. I know it's not going to be easy. It's going to take some time. I mean, 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. But then if someone is 26 today, 27, 28, even 30, and you start today, and in the next 30 years, you tell yourself, in the next 30 years, I'm going to be this. In the next 30 years, you are 60 years, you are 50-something years old, and you're already counting in billions, all right? You already, like, saved yourself a whole lot of frustration that you would have, you know, would have gone through if you just relaxed and then, you know, folded your hands and folded your legs on the cushion. So, you can, you can do this. You can study about it, read about it, search for more information. And I believe that with hard work, with persistence, you know, and everything, and with God, and with God, that is the most important factor. And with God, you will be able to get to the level that God wants you to get. All right? I don't know if I've helped you in any way. So if I've helped you in some way, or if you like the video, please drop a comment below like the video share it with some of your friends but i would also appreciate so much if you could tell me i mean where i got wrong maybe i started some figures that you are not right i made some mistakes and all that so if you could like tell me and then share your own ideas with me too because i would want to i would love to learn i would love to hear from you it's, it should be a discussion all right god be with you and then see you in my next video i hope to be regular with this